Tis the season to be really jolly here on Miss Earth Crown. After a successful and unparalleled coverage of Miss Earth 2020, Miss Earth Crown moves forward with a new look, a new brand, and new original content. This is MEC TV. This Christmas season, witness the premiere of our brand new show, In Focus, a show where we ask important questions, one on one. And for the premiere season of In Focus, all eyes are on Miss Earth USA 2021. And our American queens will be here to prove why they should be the next Miss Earth USA. And in the coming year, get ready for a bigger and bolder Miss Earth 2021, the MEC coverage. With our shows that will definitely keep you posted. MEC in focus. One on one, hot button, hot topics. MEC inside stories. Interviews with present and past queens and more special guests. An MEC pageant roundup. Your weekly dose of Miss Earth pageant analysis during the Miss Earth season. So join us starting this holiday season and in the coming year with a heavy dose of Miss Earth that only MEC TV can deliver. Hello! Good morning everyone here in the Philippines. Isang makakalika sa umaga sa ating lahat. Welcome back to the Miss Earth Crown TV or MEC TV. I am going to be your main host for today. My name is Noy Sabilano. I am the Chief Correspondent of Miss Earth Crown. And we have an extra special episode today. But before we introduce, I'm so excited. I love this queen so much. But before we introduce her, because she's back, 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 back on MEC. I'm going to be joined today by my good friend, our Eco Beshi, our editor in chief. Let's all welcome Marky Gachalian. Hi, Marky. Hello. Good morning. Happy Sunday. But I think in the US it's still sun Saturday evening. So happy Saturday. You know. Yes, she's back. And we're very excited that she's back. And she's aiming for a back to back. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Really? Love, I'm very excited for this guest, and I hope you stay tuned because we have uh, exciting activities for her today. I'm Marky, and I'll be the co-host of No Night. There you go. Marky is so right. She's back, and she's going to talk about a back-to-back -back win for the USA and so much more. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, our newly crowned Miss Earth USA 2021. Let's all welcome Marissa Page Butter. Hello, hey everyone. Hello, Noi. Hello, Marky. Thank you for having me on today. Appreciate it. Yay. So first, we'd like to say congratulations, our new queen, Marissa. Thank you, well, thank you so much. Yes. Oh, that was such a, a, so much emotions when I won that title. I've been working for it for so long. and. Just to be able to actually have the crown now is just such an honor. And I'm looking forward to representing the United States at Miss Earth this fall. So, so excited to come on here and have one of my first interviews back with you at Miss Earth Crown. So oh my I'm God. I'm excited for our Filipino segment as well. I'm excited to learn new phrases. Yes, <laughs> yes you know what, Marky? We're so excited because, Marissa, you were our very first um, guest on our In Focus series for Miss Earth yes. USC. But, and now you are going to be our very first guest once again for our Miss Earth 2021 series. So how exactly. do you feel about that? <laughs> I guess you always put me first. I appreciate that so much. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, anything you want to say, Marky, to Marissa before we start our segment? And you never know. This might be a premonition once again. Do you recall what happened oh, to Lindsay? I would, oh. I would absolutely love that. Hopefully, I'll be your first interview uh, next year as well. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, 
again, we're not going to delay this any further. We're going to start with our first special segment. Okay, but before that, let me quickly look at the comments section. Let's, let's say hi to everyone right now because there are a lot of comments coming in. Let's say hi first. Our first commenter, Kendra Vince Cabio. Hello. <laughs> Hello there. And Marissa, maybe um, this one is very familiar with you because he is our U.S. correspondent. Oh, for hi, Ralph. It was so great seeing you in Orlando. Hi, Ralph. Thank you so much for all the beautiful photos. <laughs> Exactly. One more. Let's have a couple more. Melissa Ramdia. They're actually interacting in the comments right now. Very good. Thank you so much, Melissa. Let's also have, um, of course, someone very familiar with you again. Oh, hi, Linnell. Hi, Linnell. <laughs> hi, Linnell. And let's see, have someone. Okay, one more here. Let's have um, Kier Nash is saying hi to you, gorgeous. <laughs> there you go. So to all of the fans tuned in right now, please um, continue the enthusiastic um, participation in the comment section because right now we're going to start off with our first segment. I love this. And I'm, I'm excited. Also fresh because we have I'm excited for this. <laughs> okay, so let's have our first segment, which is what we call... Let me just do this first. This is our very first segment. And this was actually something that um, Marissa requested herself. Okay? So this is our first segment, which is what we call, let me just flash this one, our Filipino-only challenge. Okay? So there you go. So can you see the screen right now, Marissa? Yes, I can. <laughs> Okay, so what's going to happen now is Marissa is going to be challenged to learn some new Filipino expressions and words. Okay, and Marissa, you will have to represent because this is something that you will have to yes. have to do in the U.S. Okay. The... No, I think we lost Noi. <laughs> Okay, yeah, we lost me. I'm so sorry. Yes. There. You're back. Because I need to um have you on the screen right now. Okay. Okay, let me just uh, have all of us in one screen. I'm so sorry. No worries. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, let's have you on the screen. Okay, anyway. Let me just have everyone on the screen right now, okay? So Marissa, we're going to challenge you to do this, okay? And you will have to say the words after us, okay? Let's have okay. letter one, expressions. Are you ready, Marissa? Yes, I am. <laughs> there you go, okay. First one, the very simple ones, I want you to say, Kamustaka, which is how are you? Okay, can you repeat that, Marissa? Kamustaka. Yes. yes. Marky, would, would you like to teach Marius on the next one? Another one would be we say this when we're appreciative of someone and we say maraming salamat. Maraming salamat? Yes, maraming salamat. It means thank you very much. Okay, so we learned or already learned two. Okay, those are easy ones. Okay, let's move on to. Like the more difficult one. So this one is our greetings. Magandang umaga means good morning. Marissa, can you repeat that? Maganda umaga? There you go. Magandang <laughs> umaga. Everyone. Next one. Very easy, right? Magandang umaga. Next one is magandang hapon. Magandang hapon? There you go. And next one is magandang gabi. Magandang gabi. There. Marky, Marissa is a fast learner, huh? Don't you think? She is. She is. Oh, thank she you. Is. Okay. Salamat po. <laughs> <laughs> Salamat. There you go. Woo. Okay. This one is so important, Marissa. You will have to say, if you want to say you love someone, you say, mahal kita or mahal ko kayo. Okay? That means I love you and or I love you all. Okay, can you say the first one, mahal kita? Mahal kita? There you go. And mahal ko kayo. Mahal ko kayo. 
Wow, there you go. Okay, Mark, maybe you can do the next level, level two. Is this increasing difficulty, level of difficulty? <laughs> kind of, kind of, yes, kind of, yes. <laughs> okay, so Marky, can you try the, the, the level two? Let's try that. Sorry, I'm not. Okay. Are you already flashing it on screen? I'm not, I'm not able yes, to see it. So. There you go. So this is what you say when you see it's either your, you see your inspiration or your crush. You have that giddy feeling. <laughs> You say, kilig ako. Kilig ako? Yes, kilig ako. Another one. Really? Let's say you want to, you want to, it's like, this is like positive self-talk and you want to push through with the day. Let's say you're tired, but you still want to push through. You say, laban. Laban. There you go. <laughs> laban or fight. Okay, next. Do we have other liners, one-liners? This one. There. Ooh, you I say like this, this one. <laughs> you say, I'm a queen. Ako ay reina. Ako ay reina. Wow. Nice. You know what, Mark? This is so easy for Marissa. I think we have to like level up the difficulty, right? Don't you think? Yes, I think we have I to. I agree. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. So this time, level three, we're oh, no. going to do counter first. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready for this one, Marissa? I think so. <laughs> okay, because it was like easy breezy for the first two levels, so we're going to increase the difficulty level this time. Okay, this one, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try to represent oh, no. Marissa. Okay? <laughs> this one <laughs> translates into 77 white whales, but in Filipino it says here, pitong put pitong puting pating. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> pitong pitong put, put. Pitong, puting okay. pating. Okay? All so, right. Marissa, you will have to repeat it three times. Okay? Maybe like slowly first. Slowly first. Okay? One, one try first. Okay? Pitong put, pitong, puting pating. Can you try that? Puting. <laughs> puting put, pitong, puting pating. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. <laughs> almost there. Almost there. One more time. One more time. Can you say the first word again for me? Pitong put. Pitong put. All right. Pitong put, pitong puting pating. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to challenge you to try it three times, but slowly. Okay? okay. Three times, but slowly. Okay. Marissa, go. <laughs> pitong put, pitong puting pating. <laughs> pitong put, pitong puting pating. Pitong put, <laughs> oh, that's so funny. That is such a tongue twister. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Now, since you were able to do the first tongue twister, we're going to challenge you to try one more. Right. One more. Oh, okay? wow. <laughs> that's a this lot. This one is, um, this one's going to be a, a mouthful. The more, yeah. the more mouthful than the first one. I'm going to try this one. Okay. Bumili ako ng bituha ng butikit sa butika. Okay? I don't know if I can say it Okay. You have to say it slowly first, boy. You have to say it slowly. Okay. Bumili ako ng bituha ng butikit sa butika. I'm so sorry. I'm so pressured. Okay, one more time. Right. Bumili ako ng bituha ng oh. butikit sa butika. Okay? So, Maria, I'm going to try that one out. Bumili ako ng... <laughs> one more time, one more time. One more time, one more time. So the first word is Bumali. Bumali. Alright. Bumali ako no bitu bituka na bituki sa bituka. I was so mad. <laughs> I know, I know. Maybe, you know what? Maybe we can try that out in a little bit more. But you know what? Congratulations, Marissa. Thank you. Okay, so That's right now, maybe fun. Mark, right, Mark um, Marissa can say Laban, right? Yes. Can say Laban. 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 Fine, yes. Fine. Because Continue that's what on. we're going to do. Exactly. 
that's what you're going to do when you compete at Miss Earth 2021, yes. right? Laban lang, Marissa. There you go. Okay. So maybe we can like, look at the comment section. Guys, if you have any Filipino word or Filipino fans, if you want to teach Marissa right now, aside from the ones that you're uh, that you saw a while ago, feel free to comment down below. So let us see if there are more comments for this before we move on to our next segment. Okay. Um, one of your mentors, Danelle. Okay. Oh, <laughs> <It's hi now. laughs> I will see her later. <laughs> I don't think she approved. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe actually just the the tongue twisters, Marisa. But then all of the expressions, right, Mark? She was yeah, expressed. she did very well with oh, the expressions, good, good. the one-liners. <laughs> okay. Oh. And our U.S. sports content, Rob Sambat is saying this is so fun to watch. We agree. We totally <laughs> agree with you. Okay. And okay, one more. We'll have here someone. Actually, one of your um. Fellow elemental queen is watching right now. Oh, yay. Tiana oh. Denti. Hi, Tiana. Oh, thank you for signing on. I can't wait to do some projects with you later on this year. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So right now, Marissa, so what we're going to do is um, I'm going to turn it over to Mark because right now we're going to ask you questions about you know your pageant story, right, Marky? Yes, you're correct. In this next segment, we will look at the history of pageantry with Marissa Page Butler. We will look at, because she's been in the pageant circuit for over a decade, we'll just look at the highlights of Marissa's pageant story. And uh, we will look at how she transformed okay, from a from a beautiful swan to a very beautiful swan. <laughs> you're so sweet. <laughs> All right. So. Let's probably start, uh, if you don't mind sharing to us probably uh, some tidbits on your journey or your pageant story. We'll be starting with the first picture that, that Noi will be showing. And I think you started and when you joined Miss USA, how was it? How was, dif how was it different from the, your current um, status as Miss Earth USA? How is the pageant that pageant system different from this one? It's probably just the first thing I'd like to find out. Well, I think that the very biggest difference that I found, at least with the Miss Earth USA system, is I just really have fallen in love with the directorship at Miss uh, Earth USA. Uh, I feel like they really focus on making sure that it's a great experience for the girls who are coming in. Whereas, um, not that there's anything wrong with Miss USA, it was still a really wonderful experience. It just didn't feel as much of a tight-knit family as it does mm -hmm. at Earth USA. Um, but going to Miss USA, I was very young still. I was probably only like 20, 21 when I went mm -hmm. to Miss USA. Mm -hmm. I just was right out of college and it was kind of a bit of a whirlwind. I, I graduated mm -hmm. one day, got on a plane the next day, went to Las Vegas to compete at Miss USA. So it was, it was definitely very much like a small town girl for me. Mm -hmm. uh, Went to this very big stage and i really didn't know what to expect um but i had so much fun and i met so many beautiful wonderful women one of which mm -hmm. was imani who actually was the one who ended up inspiring me to join miss earth usa later on mm -hmm. so i really think that every single aspect of my pageant uh, career has always been it, the purpose has been to lead me here and that's oh, what i truly mm -hmm. feel when i mm -hmm. came into this earth usa system that i really finally found a home so that i'd say that that's kind of more the difference it's not that i didn't love my experience at miss usa i just feel that now i have found the place where i belong and truly with the system that really speaks to who i am as a person most <laughs> wow thank you and you <laughs> mentioned that Oh, every journey led you, to, actually led you to where you are right now. Let's move on to the next one. Yeah. After <laughs> competing and and representing Maine in Miss USA, you won yeah. another crown, <laughs> and that is Miss World America. So, wow. Okay, how is that different now from Miss USA to Miss World? 
Yes. So as you know, Miss USA is a lot more modeling based, uh, whereas Miss World is a lot more philanthropic. So mm -hmm. you have the beauty with a purpose aspect, which is more on the humanitarian side uh, as far as their focus. And so going to Miss World was an amazing experience. Uh, my national is actually a virtual pageant. So uh, that was a little bit different uh, getting there. But once I was at Miss World, it was wonderful. My favorite part was actually the sports competition and the talent competition so I actually won the overall sports so it was Miss World Sports wow. 2018 and that was my goal going into the pageant I was always an athlete so that was the, the what I wanted to take away from that Miss World experience besides the friendship world sports women trophy <laughs> And I paid wow. for it too. I did end up breaking my foot <laughs> when wow. I was competing for the Miss World Sports uh, title. So I definitely put in a lot of blood, sweat, and tears <laughs> into winning that title. And then something I really, really have as one of my greatest uh, pageant experiences at that point was that sportswoman challenge. <laughs> wow. After that hard work you mentioned, using your <laughs> words, it was hard work for you. Yes. Your foot is like uh, a few <laughs> inches away now. No, it's you're now here. You are now Miss Earth USA. Yes. How, yes. Did you, how did that journey from Miss USA to Miss World, now Miss Earth USA, transformed you as a pageant contender? How different were you? In, your, in those oh, two previous editions compared to now. Completely different. And I always say this to everyone, pageantry is one of the most transformative experiences that you can have as an individual, as long as you put in the work and effort. So you really need to make sure that after every single pageant, whether you win or lose, you are looking and seeing what can I do better next time? And so, like I said, I started off Miss USA. I was a really young girl. A small town girl from Maine didn't really have much experience with what uh, pageantry at this large of a scale was. So that was a really big shock to my system, a learning opportunity. And then the reason why I ended up doing Miss World first was because I didn't want to go to Miss Earth, the system that I felt that really fit me best uh, before I was ready. I didn't want to have that same experience of, you know, not feeling like I was completely ready for that opportunity mm -hmm. when it came. So that's why I went over to the Miss World system first. So mm -hmm. I could get a little bit more exposure and practice and really hone in who it is I am, who I am, what my purpose is, mm -hmm. and what the message I'd want to leave as a national title holder would be within this earth system. So that really all, like I said, it all brought me to this moment in time uh, to be in the right place and the right time with the right system. And I couldn't be more grateful for my experience and my journey just because of all the wonderful people have brought into my life and the personal growth that I had because of it. All right, good. If you are then, since it was a really uh, amazing journey for you, if you are to capture that journey in a nutshell, let's say using a line, a line mm -hmm. or two, what would be that line that will best <laughs> capture the pageant story or journey for you? <laughs> For me, I would say it's just down to dedication and stubbornness. I knew that this was what I wanted to do, and I put in all the work I needed to do to be able to get to this title of this Earth USA. And it takes a lot of being stubborn, it takes a lot of being dedicated, and putting in a lot of hard work. So I say that those three words are really what encapsulates my entire experience. Wow. <laughs> if, let's say, let's say uh, there will be a pageant new me newbie who would be approaching you will be asking you something about pageants what can this pageant newbies pick, pick up from your story i think that the biggest thing that uh, when i realized this i had my most personal growth was not to look at the other girls necessarily as you know competition but look at them, if, if you find someone oh, intimidating, embrace mm -hmm. that and become their friend. Because when you find a woman intimidating within a pageant, you really, mm -hmm. at the base of it, you find them inspiring. There's something about them that you find inspirational that you wish you had as well. So what I ended up doing is I just started becoming friends with those girls. And I'm telling you, that has been the single most transformative experience for me is embracing the women around me. because pageantry brings the most amazing women into your life as long as you are receptive to it they can become the greatest tools for your personal growth as we all know i'm very good friends with vanessa 
Uh, so she ended up helping me win this title. I don't think that I would be able to be Miss Earth USA without her mm -hmm. or without mm -hmm. my dear friend, Danielle. So mm -hmm. these are women that I met through pageantry that if I was just seeing them as a competitor instead of someone who could become my friend, I wouldn't have been able to have that personal growth that would happen because of them. I love that. I love that nugget of wisdom. Befriend the girls <laughs> around you. You yes. learn from, from this different people. So I love that. Instead of treating them as competition, Yes. Make why not make them friends, right? <laughs> exactly. <Wow. laughs> I love that. Thank you. So now, now that we have seen her journey, we have seen her transformation. She even showed us uh, a bit of a nugget of wisdom. Let's now focus on your Miss Earth 2021 journey. And it will just be a few months away. I'd like to find out though. So I know that a lot of fans are asking this. The current Miss Earth USA, or rather the current Miss Earth is from the USA. It's Lindsay. I'd like yeah. to find out what are your thoughts, feelings, thoughts on the possible back-to-back -back win. You know, I'm really using this as a chip on my shoulder that is making it so that I focus and I work as hard as I possibly can over these next few months to make my country proud of me. And I know that a back to back doesn't happen very often, but it is possible. And I know that if it does happen, I have to show up at my absolute best that I have ever been at any point in my pageant career. So that's really giving me a motivation to really test my limits between now and this earth to see just how much more growth I can have. This will be my last pageant ever so i want to make sure that i leave absolutely everything out on the stage when i am at miss earth uh, this fall so i really want to make sure that i am really focused and working on those things i know i can work on and become better at because i want to know that no matter what happens when i'm walking off that stage i did my absolute best performance but i really do think that having that back to back in the back of my mind is making it so that I'm working harder than I have ever worked before. So I almost see it as a um, more of a, let's say, it, I think that it's actually a benefit for me because it's making me work that much harder to prove that, yes, this back to back is something that I can pull off and something that we in the US uh, all will be able to do together. So I, I see it as a positive, even though I know it could be very intimidating some, I, I'm very happy that I have that extra pressure for me because I think it'll just drive me to do my absolute best. Wow, amazing. I think you'll do well because of that mentality, that mindset, that the feeling. I'd like to find out though, um, you, you, we had an actual pageant uh, which, conduct, yes. which was conducted in the US, Miss Earth. Mm -hmm. USA, what are some of the lessons that you've learned there, which you could bring to the competition mm -hmm. as you go to yeah. the actual Miss Earth International stage? Yes, well, I think that one of the big things that I can improve upon is my stage presence. Uh, and I think being a, we haven't had a real in-person pageant in quite a while. So mm -hmm. I do feel that that is an area where I can work on between now and then. Um, and then also just uh, really, like I said, leaning into the people and support systems around you and really finding people that you can trust and will give you good guidance and really building up that team. I think the biggest lesson that I have learned when I went for Miss Earth USA is to rely on a team and, and to have people help you and be in your corner. I feel all my past passions, I completely prepared 100% on my own. And this one I actually brought in so many more people. I, I mean, Team Maine was so big. I don't think I could even list off everyone that helped me along this way because it really takes a village to be able to pull off something this grand. And I, I really know that I'll be leaning on that support system and on my journey to this earth as well. Wow, thank you. I'm pretty sure you've also made friends during that pageant. Yes. Who were the pageant sisters that you were close to and what were some of your unforgettable yes. moments? Uh, yes. So I say that my one of my absolute favorite girls was Emma. Uh, as you all know, she's the most absolute sweetheart. And I just love that she is standing for such a positive message. Uh, but we got a really chance. Actually, we, 
at first I didn't think she liked me <laughs> at first because I, I tried to like catch her eye once and then it, like she looked away. I was like, oh no, what did I do? Um, but I went up and talked to her. I was like, I like, and we just hit it off right away. She's like, oh no, 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 I didn't even see you looking at me. <laughs> so it was a funny little story where we ended up and becoming really close. Um, and it was at first I just thought she didn't like me, but that wasn't the case. Uh, so that was absolutely oh one of my favorite girls especially for the conversation emma is such an amazing conversationalist so yeah. i really enjoyed we stayed up one night till probably like 11 o'clock down in the lobby just chatting away and getting to know uh -huh. one another um and then another one i really love miss new york uh she was actually the one who took all my photos the whole week so we kind of did a little team swap for that uh, and i uh -huh. she was just such a sweetheart uh, so those two are really uh, something that stick out, but also I'm really excited about my entire elemental court. They were all uh -huh. wonderful girls, and I'm really looking forward to being able to work with them. So like Alyssa M, we were we did cleanups together uh, when we were doing the Keep Orlando Beautiful event, and we got to know each other very well as well. So that is something I'm really looking forward to do is more activities with all my elemental court going on this year. Good. Thank you so much. Hmm, probably like to find out uh, the moment you got crowned. Mm -hmm. How did you feel when that crown was being uh, put on your head? <laughs> it was like, I don't know. It's really hard to put into words. It's just something that is like a very overwhelming moment because you work so hard for so long for that one moment. And the, it's almost like a sense of relief uh, when that crown hits your head. It's like, you did it and <laughs> exactly in that phase just that triumphant <laughs> we did it um and i just felt a big sense of pride just because i, I knew how many people helped me and, and so at that moment i was just really thankful for everyone who believed in me along this journey and, and helped me get to that moment and, and i'll say it time and time again it really was the, the team is what makes the queen and the, having such an amazing team going into this i could not be any more grateful Thank you. A big shout out to Marissa's team. Congratulations yes, to you. you now you team USA. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Now, speaking of Marissa's team, your team, and on your way to the Miss Earth International pageant, I'd like to find out if you could actually share it to us. What's your game plan in this <laughs> international stage? If you have any, well, if you don't, if you don't, I don't mind know sharing. I not share too much quite yet, but it is going to be just again doing a lot of work a lot of self-preparation uh but i can't really dive into it too deep we haven't had our annual meeting yet with the miss earth usa mm -hmm. director so that is actually something we're going to be doing tomorrow so i'll have a little bit more of an idea from the national office what it is they will want um but as far as my team we have already hit the ground running i'm already planning on going down to mexico for a little while to train mm -hmm. with my friend vanessa but other than that, I cannot share any more. Um, but I, you'll see, you'll see. Janice, they're the same quiet. Yes. <laughs> We're not supposed to share any. Supposed All right, fine. <laughs> Just make sure that you post pictures, okay? So we'll yes. be in the loop. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Marissa, for sharing to us your journey, your feelings, your game plan. Maybe we could hear now from the fans, Noi. How are they? Yes, what questions correct. do they have, if you don't mind? Yes, okay. So, because we have one more challenge for Marissa, we have okay. thought of a challenge. But before we go in this challenge for Marissa, let's say hi to um, some of our fans right now. Okay. Again, Linnell is saying bawal. Meaning, you cannot share right now. <laughs> oh, <wow>. Not yet. <laughs> no. Okay. So, we're not going to ask any for the girl. Okay. And we have also one uh, of our good friends here, Ben Marlowe. Mark is watching right now. Uh, Marissa, can you say hi to Ben Marlowe? Hi, Ben Marlowe. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> there you go. And um, some of our fans still, Nat Lee is saying hi wow amazing miss earth usa watching here from ksa hello how oh, thank hi, you Matt. hi and also malika yates is also watching right now hi malika there you go lots of hearts there and okay 
one of our co-hosts, Emmanuel Wells, is saying, hello po, I'm a big MC fan. He's just joking. He's in Japan right now. Eman, have fun wherever you are right now. Hi. Hi. And to all, of the fans, to all of the fans, by the way, after our next segment, that's when we're going to um, uh, we're going to tell you to ask your questions in the comment section for our extra special queen for today. But right now, Marissa, we have one more challenge we're going to throw into you. Okay, yes. this is of course something that we thought of, and this is what we call. Okay, let me just put this one. Allow me to um put this first in the sharing. <laughs> Let me share this one first. So this is what we call our MPT Q&A roulette. Okay. So what we're going to do now, Marissa, is we're going to throw in past questions from the past um, editions of Miss Earth over the years. But then we have a twist. We have some of our favorite queens ask the question themselves. Oh, so are you ready? Please? Yes. Who, who yes, ask the first question. Okay, let's have first this question coming from your fellow sister queen from Miss Earth USA. Let's see this one. I'm so excited for this. Let's have the very first question coming from. Hi, Marissa. It's Emma Loney, your Miss Earth USA sister queen. I am here to ask you a question. So this question is a modified version of the final question from Miss Earth 2008, won by Carla Henry. And the question is this, if you have a chance to speak to the newly elected U.S. President Joe Biden about the state of the global environment, what would you tell him? Good luck. So let me repeat that question for you, Marissa. So that is a question coming from Emma Loney, your sister queen. Yes. And her question was, if you have a chance to speak with newly elected U.S. President Joe Biden, about the state of the global environment, what did you tell him? Yeah, so thank you for that question. So first and foremost, I would tell him thank you for rejoining the Paris Accord. I think that it is so important that we are part of the conversation because if we're not part of the conversation, we cannot be part of the solution. But I'd also want to focus on our transportation as well within the United States. We do not have very much structured transportation that is environmentally sustainable. And I think one of the ways we can combat that is by allowing people to continue working from home and encouraging businesses to keep that as an option. Because I know personally by living in a city, I am seeing so much less smog in the air and so much less traffic. And I can see our city rebounding with our environment. So I would like to keep that in mind and, and let him have, um, to give him a, just an example of one way that we can tackle that problem. There you go. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. Answer. Love that. There you go. That's a really great answer. Thank you so much Thank for you. answering that. And Thank you to Queen Emma Loney, one of her favorites yes. as well. <laughs> yes, you know what? One, uh, one trivia, you know what, Marissa, when I messaged her, she said in a heart with game. Aww. I'm a game to ask that question. So she is so absolutely uh, this I, I think she, oh, no. I know I'm not supposed to have favorites, but I, I think she might have been my favorite. <laughs> I love okay. her so much. Yeah, we love Emma as well. <laughs> okay, Hi, now, Emma. next question, Marky. Let's have this one coming from the USA to the Philippines. Oh, this yeah, one yeah. is coming from Jane <laughs> Tormes, our Miss Philippines. Fire 2020. So let's have this question coming from her right now. Let me just play that video first. Isang nagaalab at makakalikas ang araw sa inyong lahat. I am Shane Quintana Tormes, Miss Philippines Fire 2020. Hello to all Miss Earth Crown fans and congratulations to the newly crowned Miss Earth 2021, Marissa Page Butler. I have a question coming from Miss Earth 2005, won by Alexandra Brown. The question is, if you were to save one of the two elements of Mother Nature, water or air, which would you choose? And why? Oh, 
So again, to repeat the question, Marissa, if you were to save only one of the two elements of Mother Nature, water or air, which would you choose and why? I think I would pick water because that is one of the most, uh, that affects more people and animals than any other uh, element in this world. All life came from the ocean. So I feel that that is one that we can really focus on to be able to make sure that we do have a chance for life to continue on Earth. So I put water to preserve all life. There you go. Another great answer, right? Thank you so much. Thank you so much as well to um, our queen, Shane Tormis, for asking that question. And one last, we are so excited for this one because we have someone international this time. We're going to have this question now coming from one of our favorite queens right now from Miss Earth 2020. Let's have Lungo Catete, Miss Earth South Africa 2020. And this is her question for you. Good day to you all, my Baha'i Philippines, and a special hello to my Miss Earth Crown family. Today we have a very special guest, the newly crowned Miss Earth USA 2021, Marissa. I would just like to take this moment to say congratulations, and I'm wishing you all the best for your reign going forward. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Lungo Katete, Miss Earth South Africa 2020, and a Miss Earth 2020 finalist. Today I have a very special question for our very special guest. It was asked in 2012 when the beautiful Queen Teresa was crowned. I hope you're ready. <laughs> what would you consider as your defining moment as a woman? So this is again her question. Thank you, Lungo, for that question. So the question is, Marissa, what would you consider as your defining moment as a woman? You know, actually, this happened very recently. Uh, so it was at the Miss Earth USA pageant. I think that my onstage question answer was one of my defining moments because I, as a financial advisor, I, I'll repeat my answer, My as a financial advisor, I am no stranger to being the only woman in the room, uh, but I want to show every single woman out there that if you're ever in that situation, to stand up, use your voice, and take up the space you deserve in this world. And so I think that that was a real defining moment for me, just because it really was accumulation of everything that I have gone through as a economist, as a financial advisor, as a woman in sports. I've always been the one woman in the room, and I always was very intimidated by that but i think that really by encouraging everyone else to be able to see that just because something is hard does not mean it's not worth doing and to really forge forward and take up like i said that space that you deserve in this world and that really that moment on stage that really has been one of the maps to highlights of not only my pageantry career but also as a woman there you go. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow. So you know what, um, Marissa? I also watched, I was able to watch the final question part. I was totally blown away with your answer. And I think that's going to be your, your guiding light, like that's what you're going to, um, to carry once you yes. go to the finals of Miss Earth 2021. Don't you agree, Marky? You're on mute. Do you have anything to say? Any comments? Yeah, I there? totally agree. That's a, a amazing. I love that answer as well. I'll use that as a guiding light. I think you'll be able to achieve that goal of a back to back. So thank you. I appreciate that. that so much. <laughs> so once again, Marissa Laban. 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 <laughs> Laban. <laughs> I'm loving it. Laban. Okay. Now. That ends our special segments for Marissa Page Butler. Now is the time for our fans to ask their own questions for our lovely guests for today. Earthlings, we now open the floor for your questions. I think we have one question here coming from, okay, let me just um, like backtrack a little bit because we have one more, one question coming earlier. This is coming from Vision Provokovich, okay? And this is her question, Marissa. My question to Miss Earth USA 2021. Do you think how nature can help 
solve even the problem the world is experiencing about the pandemic caused by COVID-19. So how do you think can nature solve the problem of the global pandemic? Well, I think that one thing that 2020 really taught us was the importance of our health. And that's, that our health is directly related to the health of our planet. So I think that it almost is igniting a fire in us to show that that is so important that we preserve our planet so that we can continue being healthy later on. So as far as COVID specifically, that is something we could have avoided if we had better etiquette with plants and animals. As we know, COVID was transmitted to humans from animals. And if we were interacting with animals in a more uh, educated and respectful manner, that is something that I think that we could have avoided. So I do think that we can learn from our mistakes here and move forward with uh, this new knowledge and respect for our earth so we can avoid having pandemics like this in the future. There you go. Thank you so much for answering that question. Um, while we're waiting for some questions to come in, Marissa, because I was uh, I had the great opportunity of like interviewing you the very first time here on Miss Earth Brown. And you talked yes. about your advocacy, which is the collective earth, which is a really great um extensive advocacy to you know establish respect for nature and everything that lives. Um, what's now your plan? Um, in the global level, now that we have a global platform, what is now the plan for the, uh, the collective earth, your advocacy? Yeah, so I'm trying to expand it. So like you know, I started within both Maine and then San Diego is where I really have been focusing most of my efforts. And while there is a lot of work to do right here close to home for me, I know that there are so many plants and animals across the world that do need that help. I do want to start going into schools virtually to be able to start talking about my platform, The Collective Earth, around the United States as Miss Earth USA. So that is one of the most immediate things that I am doing to be able to expand my advocacy past just San Diego, where I currently live. But I'm very much looking forward to doing uh, more things globally as well. I. I do want to start doing a virtual cleanup. As you know, I, I'm a leader of We Clean Trails. So one of the things that we're going to be doing this uh, this upcoming month is I'm going to have one day where it actually will be a virtual cleanup as well. So you can join us no matter where you are in the world. So that's something I'm really looking forward to sharing with not only my community, but with the world as well. Because I think that once you get into nature and really experience a firsthand experience with plants and animals and the soil beneath your feet, it's very hard not to fall in love with nature. And when you love something, that brings respect. I believe respect is the highest form of love that there could be. So we exactly. need to start with making people fall in love with the world around them and seeing that that is something that is so important for us to preserve as well. I love your Very idea cool. of a virtual virtual um, cleanup and a virtual school tour. Yes. Maybe speaking of the virtual school tour, maybe you could we could connect you to one of our uh, hosts and um, and um, colleagues as well, Emman, because he's a teacher in Japan, oh, and I think I think I he does. That. He, he likes to invite people from different parts of the world to show them number one of their culture. That is an opportunity for you probably to um, oh, I'd love share to your that. platform. Thank you so much for offering that to me. I, I definitely want to up on that. <laughs> sure. So, Emman, please just message Marissa. <laughs> Emman says, OMG, yes. <laughs> oh, oh, perfect. Yes. Perfect. Yes. I can't wait. <laughs> Yeah, and I also want to use, I'm also a certified Leave No Trace trainer. So I'm not sure if you are familiar with that. That is something that I knew, no, is in the U.S., but also within other countries as well. It teaches seven principles about how we can actually respect nature while we are in it to be able to limit our impact. So I actually am a certified trainer. So one of the things I want to start doing is to put on more virtual classes where people can come and actually earn a certification for Leave No Trace through me as a teacher. So that is another thing that we do want to have. I think the one thing that is kind of too bad is because my reign is during COVID, I am going to have to find more creative ways to be able to reach a wider audience. But being virtual, it actually allows me to reach not only people in my community, within my country, but all around the world. So I really think that we need to be embracing this change because I think that this uh, pandemic has actually given us a pause and a stop and taught us to do things in a different way. And we're able to reach such a wider audience because of that, it has such a greater impact. So I definitely want to be 
utilizing those new tools in order to really spread my message around the world. There you go. So that's already locked in, Eman. Um, Eman would like to mention, um, the, um, they had a Jamaican friend as our guest, so the next guest will be Marissa Page Foster. Oh, Ms. wonderful. Earth. I think, Marissa, your audience for this would be Japanese students, so it's an opportunity for you. Oh, that'd be so wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, so much, Thank you. Okay, sala, yes, sala, mas-go. And now, Charles Benpaz, one of our MEC um, team members would like to ask, which is more important, increasing people's standard of living or protecting the environment? That's a really good question. Yes. And I think that this question really boils down to what is more important, short-term versus long-term. So I think that in the long-term, if we focus on protecting the environment, that actually will increase people's standard of living in the future. Because like I said, if our world is not healthy, if our world is not set up to be sustainable, we will pay for that at some point. And it will be maybe not within your lifetime, but maybe within your children's lifetime that everything kind of comes to a head. Like we're seeing with the pandemic, uh, just something as simple as a virus was able to shut down our entire world. And that's something that we can avoid if we focus on protecting the environment as our first priority. Now that doesn't mean increasing people's standard of living isn't important, but we need to find what will make the biggest impact long term and I think that by focusing on protecting the environment first and foremost, we will be able to achieve all our other goals as well. Wow. You know what? That, that's a really great answer because coming from an economist, I think yes. you know what you're talking about. And that, I think, is a really great answer. Don't you think, Mark? Agree. Because a lot of a lot of governments, okay, they ha they're now experiencing, um, what do you call that, especially during the pandemic, a lot of governments have been... Uh, uh, opening the economy, and their 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 reasoning is the economy needs to be jump started, but without taking into account the effect of the economy to the environment. So, mm -hmm. well well said. I agree with you. Thank you. <laughs> and we have one more question, of course, coming from one of our good friends, Linnell, of course, one of your mentors. How would you describe the fate of the ARLC? Like how would say of the ARLC, and what lessons can you take from it? from the protection of the environment. What's your answer to that, Marissa? Yes, and I think that what it really boils down to, again, is respect. We need to make sure that we are focusing on preserving what we have currently within this world and not, make, not letting that kind of slip away because of any other uh, motivation. So we need to be focusing on preserving the earth because it is something that deserves respect in of itself. And that is something I feel that humans really don't quite, as a whole, understand is that just because it might not be something that you get from it uh, personally by maintaining something on this earth doesn't mean that it isn't worth protecting and worth saving and just knowing that every single thing whether it be plants animals a sea or anything they all deserve our respect and our love and so that would be the message i would want to be sharing is that we need to make sure that we are not being the most selfish beings on this earth and making sure we are taking into account the needs of the environment uh not just the needs of humans as well there you go thank you so much maybe maybe one more question before i move on to the last question coming from the fans marissa have you connected with some of your future miss earth 2021 um Sister Queens, I think there have been um, some crowned earlier than you. Have you yes. connect with them? I haven't yet, but I'm very much looking forward to it. Like I said, with pageantry, the sisterhood is really, I think, one of the most uh, important aspects of this entire journey. So I am really looking forward to meeting them. But as of now, I've just been trying to get caught up at work and trying to get settled in and, and in, putting together my game plan for this year. So I've been a little bit busy and haven't been really reaching out quite yet, but I'm looking forward to doing that in the near future. There you go. Now we have one more question. Actually, we have two more questions. Is it okay, Marissa? Yes, one question course. coming from One question coming from our MEC founder, Glenn Tristan, in, who is in Singapore right now. Hi, Glenn. Her Hi, question Glenn. is, how would you further your influence as a queen being a spokesperson for the environment, considering the challenges of the global pandemic. Yeah, so I think we've kind of touched on this a little earlier. You know, it's really important for us to realize that 
the environment is so important and integral to every other piece of our lives. And I think that being a queen during a pandemic also gives me the opportunity, like we said, to reach out past just my community, but by using these virtual tools and making it my voice even bigger than it could have been just being in person. I think that that is something we really need to be focusing on. And the biggest takeaway of that is just adaptability and learning how to transition with this new and changing world mm -hmm. to be able to use our voice in bigger and better ways than ever before. There you go. Thank you so much, Ben, for that answer, uh, for that question. Thank you, Chris, for that answer. And one last, coming from the fans. Okay, Marjun Veran would like to um, ask or to find out how will you promote your environmental advocacy to the young generation with disabilities? Mm -hmm. And how are you going to encourage them to participate? That's a really great question. I love that. I love that. Well, I think that there's one thing that I actually learned when I was doing my Leave No Trace training is they actually do have opportunities for virtual tours on all the national parks around the United States. And again, that's something that started because of COVID and people weren't able to go in person. But I can actually see that being used as a beautiful tool for us to be able to help educate people who might not be able to physically go out into nature. But then for those who can, I would love to be able to take them out in, I actually have with my cleanup group, I actually have make sure I have at least one or two camps per month that are on flat and paved surfaces that are able to be used with wheelchairs or with strollers. So by making sure that you are taking into account how to make this accessible for people, no matter what their abilities are, is so important when it comes to being a leader within your community so that we can make sure that anyone who does want to participate is able to. So I think that that is one thing that I would kind of focus on is making sure I can find new and exciting ways to be able to incorporate this for people. Because for me, I find being in nature is such a therapeutic uh, experience. There is no better therapy to me than being able to just go and feel the the, you know the sand beneath my toes and you know the grass like I, I absolutely love being outside and brings me such peace so by being able to find ways that we can share that with those who have disabilities i think is so important exactly because no one has to be left behind most exactly. especially exactly exactly thank you so much Agreed. and i'm going to um close the comment section now by showing this Someone is manifesting it to the universe. Alberto Coromet. Oh, Alberto Quaza. Miss Earth. We have Miss Earth according to Alberto. And that is going to be the last comment from the fans right now. Thank you so much to all of our fans. Oh, and we all good things must come to an end, right, Mark? We wish you had a longer time with your yeah. Butter. But you know what, Marissa, I'd like to end, we'd like to end with this special segment. The reason I asked for a childhood photo is because I want you to have a final word by addressing your younger self. Yes. Okay. <laughs> now, Marissa, what if you are given a chance to talk to this young girl right now being shown on the screen? What is going to be your special message? to the little Marissa, and what is going to be your message for all of the little Marissas out there watching right now? The floor is yours, Marissa. Of course. So I would say to my younger self and to any young girl is to always, always follow your dream and to dream big because when we believe in the beauty of our dreams, we can accomplish anything and to never let anyone make you feel like you do not belong somewhere in the room because when you truly believe in yourself and you put in that hard work and dedication, you can accomplish anything under the sun so always find faith within yourself and believe in yourself no matter what there you go Good job. And, and on that note now marissa we're going to give an opportunity one last chance to thank anyone you'd like to thank um who was instrumental in your journey as miss earth usa 2021 what would you like to say to, say to everyone marissa of course, I just want to thank everyone from Team Maine. I know specifically I want to say thank you to Linnell. I want to say thank you to Vanessa, my mom and dad, and everyone who has been on this journey with me for the past 10 years. I know that 
being in pageants for 10 years, it might have taken a toll on some of my members of my family. And so for them to continue to believe in me and have faith in my dream as well, it meant the absolute world to me. So thank you to my family. Thank you to Team Maine. And, and thank you to all the fans who have believed in me and continue to believe in me on this journey to this earth. Just know that I am doing everything within my power to make every single one of you proud of me. And I cannot wait to see what happens at Miss Earth 2021. There you go. We also cannot uh, wait to see your journey. We're very excited. Thank you. Thank exactly. you so much. <laughs> Marky, maybe you can like, tell our experience because we have the great opportunity to like interview first interview with MEC and then later on they win the crown. What is your yes. take on that? There's something with MEC. My take on this, it's a premonition once again. Imagine, if you recall, we interviewed Nellis 2019 for the first time she won. We interviewed Lindsay, she won. Uh-huh. It's a sign. So oh, we're very I, excited. I hope I don't break your streak. <laughs> There you go. You know what? This has been a, another delightful conversation. Marissa Page Butler would like to say this. Mahal ka namin. Mahal kita, Marissa Page Butler. We love you. Oh, thank you. Salamat po. <laughs> there you go. And once again, this has been a great, great conversation with one of our queens for 2021. Our very first interview for our Miss Earth 2021 series. Ladies and gentlemen, a virtual applause for Marissa Page Butler. <laughs> and once again, to all of the fans, thank you so much for uh, thank you for so much for tuning into our um, live conversation with Marissa. And tune in more to our series on Miss Earth Crown TV. This has been your host, Noisa Bellano, on, on behalf of my co-host, Marky Gasalian, and our queen, Marissa Page Butler, saying good Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to everyone. And maraming maraming salamat po. Have a great day, everyone. Bye! <laughs>